And so we're using the voice that God has given us, and the muzzle is off. Amen. The muzzle is off. Amen. And, and it's not going back on. Amen. Either. Praise God. Thanks to Donald Trump, you can preach anything you want to preach anytime you want to preach it. The more he heard, he began to recognize, and I say he had this keen sense of understanding the mood of America. He began to recognize that the church had lost its voice. He'd learned the Johnson Amendment because some people would say, well, he talked about talking from the pulpit, and um, I think it might have been Dobson or someone said, well, sir, we, we can't necessarily do that. And they said, why, and et cetera. And though there was only one case that really was challenged of that, um, he looked up and he took everybody over to the window and he said, you see them on the street? He said, they have more power with their voice than you who affect masses yeah, and that's millions. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's it, because I said then, so the man walking, I was in Trump Tower, I pointed down to the sidewalk, there were people walking on the sidewalk. I said, then those people walking on the sidewalk are more powerful than you people in the clergy. I said, not gonna happen anymore. They're really being silenced, we can't let that happen. And think of the power we have over the Democrats, over the Republicans. I mean, the power is, the power is in It had been predicted years ago, but as we break this down today, it is banging at the door. What does it really mean to make America great again? Well, we're about to look at how Sunday laws will make America great. Out of the mouths of the most influential people in the world today, we will see clearly the agenda and the players in this agenda. The things that have been happening over the last few years, months, or even just the past few weeks for those who understand the final movements have been incredible fulfillments of the minutest details of Bible prophecy particularly concerning the prophecies of Revelation 13 concerning the beast, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast. It has been understood for many years that the first beast of Revelation 13 is the papacy and that the mark of this beast is Sunday. From their own literature they tell us, quote, Protestants do not realize that by observing Sunday they accept the authority of the spokesman of the church, the Pope, our Sunday visitor, February 5th, 1950. And anyone who has studied history understands that the Pope puts himself above the Bible. What about you? Do you put the Pope above the Bible? Or do you still observe the correct Sabbath? Furthermore, they write, quote, Of course, the Catholic Church claims the change Saturday Sabbath to Sunday was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority in religious things. H.F. Thomas, Chancellor to Cardinal Gibbons. And remember that point. The Catholic Church changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday and they consider this the mark of her authority. And furthermore, it is repeated, quote, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance, that's from Saturday to Sunday, is proof of that fact. This is what the papacy herself has identified as her mark of authority, and her authority is not the Bible. Authority is a short word for the word author. Is your author or authority the one who wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger? Or is your authority the man who wrote and who authored Sunday with his pen? An alarm should be going off already if you've read these few quotes, but what we're about to get into should bring the alarm up about tenfold. Enough to wake up your friends, your family, your neighbors, so be sure to stay right there where you are and get comfy because we are about to get into some serious matters right now. So what was his promise to Israel? I will restore to you the judges. I mean, there's like three in Southern California that can change everything. The Lord and Donald Trump, we can talk about these things in church That's on right. Sunday morning. That's right. Supreme Court Justice. Justice. That's all. That's all you have to think. Just, Just a, a few, few hours ago, ago, the U.S. Senate confirmed Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. Proudly alongside J. 
Justice Neil Gorsuch. He's doing a great job to uphold your sacred rights and to defend your God-given freedom. Lower court stacked with Obama appointees, President Trump needs to fill 129 vacancies. We are giving our churches their voices back. We are giving them back in the highest form. In Revelation 13, we have a beast with a mark, this being the papacy, which is described as ruling the world with great power during the Dark Ages. In 1798, this beast received a deadly wound. The power and influence of the papacy over the state, which was used to destroy over 50 million people, was removed, and it could not wield the sword as it did before this. The Pope was captured and locked up at this time. We read of this in Revelation 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now right around this time of 1798, another world power came up. The United States declared independence in 1776. Now this beast or kingdom, as beasts are kingdoms in prophecy, according to Daniel 7.23, this beast or kingdom of the United States is described in the next two verses, Revelation 13, 11, and 12. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. There is a description of a beast that is to speak as a dragon. Over a hundred years ago, we were told of how this prophecy would be fulfilled in the book, The Great Controversy. I'm quoting from this book because I believe that several of the chapters in this book right now are the front page news of today. They describe what is happening to the very letter. For example, let's notice the following concerning the judges in Congress. We will come to see how this is fulfilling to the T. What does it say about the voice of the dragon? The lamb-like horns and dragon voice of the symbol point to a striking contradiction between the professions and the practice of the nation thus represented. The speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. Great Controversy, page 442. Are you making the connection before we play the next clip? The dragon's voice is through the lawmakers and judges. Lawmakers and judges pass laws. So we've got to get righteous judge in states, righteous judge in, in every position, and we've got 170-something vacancies that he'll get him pushed through. He will. Supreme Court Justice. Justice. So you have to think. Um, but they, the point of it is, they should have already been done. They've been vetted, they've been qualified, everything's there. It's just delay after delay, which is what they'd love to do with Kavanaugh. They'd love the, what they would love to do is hold Kavanaugh up. So hoping we'd lose, you know, and if we'd lose the House, lose anything, then they wouldn't get a person of Kavanaugh's stature in. And, and with Kavanaugh, and we probably will have one, if not up to a total of five others, if we can keep him in for eight years. Last year, while running for the U.S. Senate, Judge Roy Moore won the primary runoff, and there to congratulate him was Trump's right-hand man, Steve Bannon. I, I told you all last night that a vote for Judge Roy Moore is a vote for Donald J. Trump. And I want to thank all the good folks in Alabama for supporting Donald Trump today by voting for Judge Moore. We need somebody in that Senate seat who will vote for our Make America Great Again agenda. So get out and vote for Roy Moore. Do it. Do it. And you're going to see in state after state after state, people that follow the model of Judge Moore. Together we can make America great. Strange that he was there when Moore was running for Alabama Senate. Moore is known as the Ten Commandments judge. Basically, Moore wanted Alabama to be governed under the Ten Commandments. Well, Judge Moore disappeared from the scene after allegations of illicit behavior were made against him. But bringing the Ten Commandments into law did not disappear. On November 6th of 2018, a vote was taken in Alabama concerning an amendment to their constitution, which would make it a law to have the Ten Commandments on all state property and in all schools in Alabama. As most of you know, the First Amendment of the United States Constitution reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. However, the Constitution is pretty much null and void, and to those in power, unless it suits their ideas, it doesn't really matter what the Constitution says anymore. 
Donald Trump's agenda is to make America great again. And one liberal writer said it this way, realizing where this could lead with Roy Moore's Ten Commandment agenda. If we create stoning grounds in the centers of our cities and we publicly execute those who are guilty of rebelliousness, adultery, engraving, shopping on Sunday and cursing, you will see America become great again, assuming you are not the one who will be executed. Let's consider the following article which states that the challenge of Pope Francis, as this article states, is a Sabbath for the earth and the poor. Why is he focusing on the poor? There's enough gold in the Vatican to feed the world and the poor the world over. This isn't about just feeding the poor, it's about controlling the economy. Revelation 13.7 tells us that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And as we talked about, their mark is Sunday and this they claim is the Sabbath. And so in order to feed the poor, they want to take from the middle class and create a socialist system. Thus a new economy. What was the focus on the first Laudato Si Reflection Day? A sustainable economy. And the economy is mentioned throughout the Pope's environmental encyclical. Why? Because when they control the economy, then those who refuse to go along with their laws and protest can be shut off financially at the flick of a Vatican switch. Now what recently took place in Poland was that the Polish Prime Minister has been seeking to re-Christianize the European Union. But it's not just any Christianity, it is the Christianity of the papacy. Recently, Sunday laws were made in Poland and of course many around the world were watching to see how this would go. From the Christian Broadcasting Network, we read the headline, Returning to the Bible, Poland reclaims Sunday as a day of rest. Returning to the Bible? As we read above, the Pope's mark of authority is Sunday keeping and furthermore, he claims that he is above the Bible, quoting from the Catholic press, this is what we read. Sunday is a Catholic institution and its claims to observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From the beginning to the end of scripture, there is not a single passage that warrants the transfer of weekly public worship from the last day of the week, Saturday, to the first, Sunday. Catholic Press, Sydney, Australia, August 1900. This is their own admissions. This is their history. So how the Christian Broadcasting Network can say that Poland is returning to the Bible is really quite stunning. Perhaps they are unaware of history or maybe they just don't know what the Bible really teaches. So much for being Christian broadcasters, unless Christianity isn't based on the Bible as well. But when you really think about this, if they intend to bring Alabama back to commandment keeping, then what Sabbath will they be keeping? Let me remind you of some Alabama history. In the early 1890s, when several were imprisoned, but most notably regarding the enforcement of these laws, it wasn't enforced against atheists or Jews. Sunday laws were enforced only against Seventh-day Adventists. In 1891, Sunday laws were beginning to be enforced in America. Quoting from A.T. Jones regarding one man who was jailed for nine months for working in his yard on Sunday, he said, the Alabama Baptist of August 9th attempts to justify the persecution of W.B. Capps, who is now serving a sentence of nine months in the county jail at Dresden Weekly County, Tennessee, for plowing in his field on Sunday. The amendment to put the Ten Commandments on all state property in Alabama was passed on November 6th with a 73% vote. But as Dean Young said, this is no minor amendment to the Constitution. And the world will stand and watch to see how we vote on that day. Alabama will be ground zero in the cultural war. We've been witnessing the end of the Western Christian Empire, and we have an opportunity as a people, as a state, to come together and show the world that we want to acknowledge God, the Christian God that this nation was founded upon. The world is watching, so this isn't just something that is going to be in Alabama. This is something that is going to be everywhere. Notice the following article. It says Alabama revisits Ten Commandments hoping for help from Kavanaugh. Roy Moore may have went away last year, but his ideas for Alabama didn't. And when they revisit the Ten Commandments and want the Sabbath enforced by law, getting power from judges like Kavanaugh, which day do you think it will be? Will it be the Sabbath that falls on Saturday, as the Bible says? Or will it be the Roman day of the sun god, Sunday? You can bet that all these religious leaders keep Sunday. And why are they looking for help from Judge Kavanaugh? Remember that the dragon's voice is through the legislative and judicial authorities. Six out of nine of the Supreme Court judges are Catholic. And now five out of nine of them are conservative. 
but we'll let the evangelicals get to why the judges are so important. In fact, this was the very topic that Paula White discussed on Kenneth Copeland's show. Please, I'm pleading with you. You know how the Apostle Paul would beseech you and that's like, hey, I'm beseeching you right now. <laughs> you are officially being beseeched. <laughs> Now, this is not just for us to go and vote, but it's to bring other voters to the polls as well. Or what was his promise to Israel? I will restore to you the judges. I will restore to you the judges. I mean, there's like three in Southern California that can change everything. Guys, we're facing stuff like Southern California is looking at, well, there's already law that's passed through the governor that says the Bible is a book of hate speech and to ban the sale of it. So Thanks to the Lord and Donald Trump, we can talk about these things in church that's on right. Sunday morning. That's right. The judges. Kenneth Copeland says we can talk about these things in church now. You know, the voice of the dragon, Remember, the muzzle's off the mouth, and it is about to speak. We are giving our churches their voices back. And so we're using the voice that God has given us, and the muzzle is off. Amen. Amen. The muzzle is off. Amen. And, and it's not going back on. Amen. Either. No. Praise God. Remember how it was prophesied that it speaks through the judicial authorities or the judges? The Bible says that when it speaks like a dragon, it will exercise all the power of the first beast. Donald Trump did say he would give power back to the churches. In fact, he is fulfilling the very words of Revelation 13 verses 11 and 12 to a T. He has vowed to give power to the state. Just as the Bible says in Revelation 13, 12, he exercised all the same power of the first beast before him. The power of church and state. The power that was given by the dragon to the first beast. The power that he had to continue for 40 and 2 months. The political power that was run by the church. And today they are saying, let's make an image of that beast, that church and state power that ruled through the dark ages. Now is it wrong to display the Ten Commandments publicly? Absolutely not. That is not the issue here. The issue is that it is wrong to make it a law. It is a violation of the first words of the very first amendment of the Constitution, which reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. But the reality is that the Constitution is being destroyed, and we were warned about this many years ago. We can read it here of what was predicted. Quote, the dignitaries of church and state will unite to bribe, persuade, or compel all classes to honor the Sunday. The lack of divine authority will be supplied by oppressive enactments. Political corruption is destroying love of justice and regard for truth, and even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. Great Controversy, page 592. What we were told and what they don't realize is that the Constitution of the United States guarantees a liberty of conscience. Nothing is dearer or more fundamental. Great Controversy, page 564. And nothing is dear and nothing is more fundamental. We will look at how Trump has vowed that he would change the 14th Amendment with the stroke of a pen by writing an executive order. We're going to look at the religious advisors that are surrounding him, the religious advisors that are now running the state and how all this is pointing to Sunday laws in the United States, just as predicted. Vice President Mike Pence has said that laws should be based on the Bible. Furthermore, the Attorney General is the principal legal officer who represents a country or state in the legal proceedings and gives legal advice to the government. Matt Whitaker on November 7, 2018 was appointed as acting general attorney and he has said in regard to new judges who come in, quote, I'd like to see things like their worldview. What informs them? Are they people of faith? Do they have a biblical view of justice? In other words, there is a desire to have a new Roman theocracy in the White House. You do not want to miss part two of this because some of this stuff can look good to the eyes, but in reality the fruit is leading to death. Remember prophecy is given so that we can take heed, so that we can have a light in a dark place and no one understand what we need to do because there's about to be another dark ages. Second Peter 1.19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. We have a sure word of prophecy, but furthermore, prophecy is given to help those who are unlearned, 
learn to trust that God has told us these things before they come to pass. 1 Corinthians 14, 24 says, If all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or is unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. Many in the churches today do not have an understanding or a sure word of prophecy and are like blind men in the darkness trying to lead the flock. But if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So be not troubled and remember, Jesus told us these things before they come to pass. Be sure to like and subscribe and share and we'll see you in part two. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily.